and I wasn't able to get an epic drone shot, which would have been really cool. But the purpose in coming up here tonight was not about getting any sort of like epic drone footage or cool shots or anything like that. The whole point coming up here was actually the opposite. Lately, I've just been so focused on work uh, because all creatives, all freelancers, like during this time of the year, work is pretty slow. So I'm not really too worried about it, but I've just been trying to stay busy with doing things like on my website, SEO, a bunch of boring stuff. Not going to get into it, but the point is I'm in a period of time where I don't have a ton of client work going on right now. So why not take moments like this to kind of just sit back and relax a little more. Take advantage of being in Colorado and just relax and enjoy the view. All right, I'm gonna head back down and should be able to get down. There's a spot where I always fly the drone. On this side, there's gonna be a bunch of snow because uh, the sun usually doesn't hit it. And I should be able to get the sun setting. Uh, really cool drone footage here. So, fingers crossed, we'll see. All right, so by the time I parked the car again, hiked up to the top, it was already too late. There was no good light. It was already getting dark, as you can see. And I wasn't able to get an epic drone shot. But the purpose in coming up here tonight was not about getting any sort of like epic drone footage or cool shots or anything like that. The whole point coming up here was actually the opposite. In this video, I'm going to be talking about two short films I made that used a common storytelling technique. The storytelling technique I'm talking about today is begin with the end. This technique is heavily influenced by one of my favorite TED Talks by Andrew Stanton. If you don't know Andrew Stanton, he is an amazing storyteller and writer for Pixar. While there are a lot of really great storytelling techniques out there, this one is not one you may use for every film or video you make. It really just comes down to your preference and your style. The biggest perk in beginning with the end is to pique interest by giving a great hook point. It also follows another really great storytelling commandment that Andrew Stanton talks about in his video, and that is to make a promise. It's making a promise to you that this story will lead somewhere that's worth your time. And that's what all good stories should do at the beginning, is they should give you a promise. You could do it in an infinite amount of ways. It's sometimes it's as simple as once upon a time. Two movies that are great examples of this are Forrest Gump and Fight Club. Three minutes, this is it. So two films I've made in the past use this storytelling technique, and those are Full Circle and The Beekeeper. The Beekeeper was part of a competition to send the winner to Africa with a notable documentary filmmaker to make a documentary. Each film had to follow the theme of doing good in the world, which is a pretty broad statement, but the kicker is that it had to be under three minutes long which did not give me much time to tell a story about someone I had just met the week before and had one week to shoot and edit. The Beekeeper is about a National Geographic explorer who creates a sustainable tourism company in eastern Turkey. The problem was more and more villagers were leaving this small village to go to the city so they could have an income. There weren't really any jobs for the locals, so Kat, the subject, created a tourism company that brought not only the villagers income, but it also brought in tourists. Because this was a competition, I knew that I had to hook people right away. I knew that the judges 
watching this film, were watching hundreds of other videos. And if I didn't pique their interest, I would have lost their attention. Instead of starting the story off with who Kat was and what her background is, I went straight to the juiciest part. Like that's why I ended up in Eastern Turkey. I just knew that I loved this place and I loved this community and that there were bees everywhere. And I followed bees because I've been following bees since I was a little kid. And it filled my life with so much meaning. Viewers hear something immediately that piques their interest and gets them to ask a question. Why does she go to Eastern Turkey? My other film is called Full Circle and is about an artist who is now my best friend whose work is inspired by epic adventure. Jason has an amazing story of being a art teacher in high school in the Midwest who one day sells everything he owns and goes on a 6,000 mile transcontinental cycling ride. His artwork is inspired by epic adventure. Jason's art begins as sketches in his notebook, which then he takes into his computer and makes digital art. This was the first time Jason's work returned to its place of origin. The artwork that began in the sketchbook, then made its way on the computer, and then onto canvases, prints, and t-shirts, was then hung up along a trail in a beautiful aspen forest. This created the full circle experience of art that was inspired by nature, that was then returned to the nature that inspired it. While Jason has an incredible story, the story has a little bit of a slow cadence, partly due to my experience at the time. Now I knew most people watching this at the time would be people who I knew, and people who knew Jason, but I wanted to give people who didn't know either of us a reason to keep watching. My goal was to create a hook right off the bat that real people in and got them interested. Right off the bat, I have two hooks that instantly grab people's attentions. First, Jason is talking about what he just did, and that is hanging his art up along the aspen trees, which is ultimately where the film ends. The second hook is the first thing you see is a gallery of art hanging up in aspen trees along the trail, which is not something you typically see. It sets the tone and ultimately shows viewers where the film will end up. Like Jim Carrey said one time, like you can fail doing anything that you don't want to do in life, so you might as well try the thing that you want to do. And that's it for me. I just think if the whole world was to walk away from that crappy job that they are in every day that they're not happy with and they pursue the thing they wanted to do, the whole world would feel lighter just because everybody gets to do what they what they want to do. And it's not the only way you'll keep people watching your films or your videos is to pique their interest and get them to ask questions early on. The sooner your audience starts asking themselves questions, the sooner they become engaged and intrigued with your story. The more that they're invested in, the more they're gonna wanna watch. There's been a lot of times where I've been watching a video that has the potential to be a great story, but I just lost interest along the way. So as a kid, I grew up with my dad drilling into my head the saying, begin with the end in mind, in relation to everyday tasks. And it's something that he continues to drill into my head. For example, now that I live in Colorado and I know I'm going hiking, I always bring extra layers. Because if you live in Colorado, you know the weather is unpredictable and it often changes. And if you don't bring enough layers, well, you just become miserable. So I begin with the end in mind, and I always bring extra layers. My dad's words of wisdom continues to reign so true today as I make my career as a filmmaker and content creator. Like I mentioned, beginning with the end is an artistic or personal choice when making any sort of film, documentary, or video. There's lots of other storytelling techniques to use. It just comes down to your style. Sometimes it may not even be your style, but it just happens to work for one specific video you're working on. As anyone who's made a documentary, you know that the story changes during pre-production, production, and post-production. So while you may not intend with beginning your film with the end, it might start to make sense as you're in the editing room trying to piece together your story. So if you haven't done it before, then I encourage you to give it a shot. Creating stories, making videos, it's all about experimenting and trying new things. If you haven't done it before, I encourage you to begin your next video with the end.